Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining me today as we continue the theme we began yesterday, and that is what can the righteous do? What can Christians do? What can the church do about violence? One thing we cannot do and should not do about the urban violence that is taking too many of our young people, especially young black males, away from us uh, prematurely is to be passive spectators in the carnage. Christians are called to do something. Notice again what's going on in Psalm 11. Psalm 11 verse 1 says, I trust in the Lord for protection. So why do you say to me, fly like a bird to the mountains for safety? The wicked are stringing their bows and fitting their arrows on the bowstring. So people are packing. They've got loaded weapons. They shoot from the shadows at those whose hearts are right. Verse 3, the foundations of law and order have collapsed. What can the righteous do? Stop here. It says, what can the righteous do? Which means that we should do something. And one thing that we can do is to be informed on what are the causes of so much violence. And it singles out the black community in particular, especially black males, young black males ages 16 to 32. What can we do about it? We should not become so anesthetized by it that it no longer bothers us. We need to do something. We need to act. First of all, this is one thing we can do, is we can understand what is the cause of violence. And the beautiful thing about the Bible is the Bible addresses all of the issues, personal and systemic, that we deal with today. In the book of James, James, who is the half-brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, he talks about what causes violence. In James chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3, with a special emphasis on verse 2, we read this, what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? So he wants to know what are the causes. Remember, we're dealing with causes right now. Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? So people are having internal conflicts. And, and the external conflicts is simply an outward manifestation of the internal conflicts that are going on inside people. Whenever you can't get along with yourself, you will never be able to get along with other people. Verse 2, you want what you don't have, so, the, so you scheme and kill to get it. Stop here. He says you want, here, you want what you don't have. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting something. There's nothing wrong with being aspirational, to have desires. One of the things that distinguishes the Christian faith from the Eastern religions like Hinduism is that Hinduism and Buddhism are religions that talk about non-desires. Don't get rid of your desires. Uh, get caught up in the desireless state of nirvana. Well, the problem with not having desires is that the desire to not have a desire is a desire. So even when you don't, des don't desire to have a desire, you're desiring something. So we can't truly escape desires. And more importantly, there's nothing wrong with desire. Now, what does, do these people want? It says, you want what you don't have. And the reason why there is so much violence in the black community is just with that line. Black people don't have anything. In these urban communities like West Louisville, where there is an epidemic of violence in areas in Chicago on the south side, where there's an epidemic of violence. These are communities that have been disinvested, and the residents of those communities don't have anything. They don't have job opportunities. They don't have educational opportunities. More affluent neighborhoods and communities take certain privileges for granted. They don't have access to opportunities. They do not have the social context and connections then hook them up with the best jobs. They are communities that have been disinvested. What you want, what you don't have. People want basic necessities. 
and in urban communities because of the way we have maldistributed opportunity and maldistributed wealth, these are communities that do not have anything. Here's the problem. You don't have anything. You want what you don't have. So you scheme and kill to get it. So the reason why there is violence is because People not having opportunities, if they can't have opportunities in a legitimate way, then they will seek to secure opportunities in an illegitimate way. So when the mainstream economy does not accommodate poor urban people, black people, American descendants of slaves, then when the mainstream economy, then people turn to alternative economies. They turn to crime. They turn to desperate things. They turn to uh, the sale of drugs or other activities. But they're simply responding in a negative way to a set of circumstances that they have been given that is really not their fault. There are a lot of kids who are not born into the world. They're damned into the world because they are born into situations in which they don't have opportunities. So he says, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. Which is to say that people would not have to scheme and kill and sell drugs and do some of the other things they do if we would level the playing field and give people opportunity. The word policy, policies, which is very important, is deciding who gets what. And when it comes to policies, there are three types of policies. There is, for example, there is public policy. And public policy determines uh, who gets what. Public policy leaves certain communities behind. Certain communities are behind because of public policy, disinvestment. And these urban communities where there's a lot of crime, public policies have put them in the behind situation. So when you're behind and you can't catch up, that leads to private policy. Now, what's private policy? Private policy is how you think. Public policy, I'm behind. I don't know anyone. I don't have opportunity. I'm behind. So private policy is how you think. And you start looking at your circumstances and when there's no opportunity and never hope for opportunity, and you go from because you're behind to having private policy that makes you bewildered. Bewildered. Bewildered means I don't have any hope. And when you don't have any hope, when you're bewildered because you're behind, then it affects your personal policy. And your personal policy has to do with behavior, how you behave. So look at how what causes violence. You're behind. You want something. It has not been just certain communities are high opportunity communities. Certain communities are low opportunity communities. The violence is taking place in low opportunity communities. You are behind. You don't know what to do what about it, so you become bewildered. Nothing's going to change. I got to fix this. I got to survive. I got to live. You become bewildered, which leads to personal policy. You behave, and sometimes you behave in, in ways that help to accelerate or generate violence. But the root cause behind, see, what we like to do is when we talk about violence, we like to start with personal policy. How do we get them to stop behaving? Well, if you want to end personal policy that is, that is, that is violent, behavior is violent, then you've got to change the public policy. If you could make sure that communities are not poor, it's called justice, social justice, that communities, all communities have opportunities, all communities have good schools, all communities have great contacts, all communities have great job opportunities. Well, if you can help those communities catch up so they're not behind, it's going to affect private policy. You to become bewildered. Hey, hey. I, I can get this job. I'm going to make a living wage. I can go back to school because they're providing grant money for me to go back to school and get a, get a trade. I'm, I'm not bewildered anymore. That's going to affect your behavior. We will never fix 
violence working only on the personal policy level, trying to get people, quote, unquote, saved in terms of personal policy if we don't have the courage to address the public policy, which is the, which causes the private policy and the personal policy. We must create a more just society if we really want to, to eliminate the violence within the community. Well, brothers and sisters, we're going to pick up on this again tomorrow, uh, but it's important that Christian be, Christians be informed on what is the causes of so much violence. It's not because black males are innately more violent than other people. It is because black males and the black community in particular have been given public policies for centuries that have been unjust. And the private policy, the way I think, and the personal policy is simply the consequence. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Help us to understand the root causes the violence that's erupting in our community and help us be prepared to be prepared to do something about it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for being with me on another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you at St. Stephen Church. So contact us, email us, newstart at ssclive.org. We will get back with you. Until we gather again tomorrow, please have a blessed day. And remember, during COVID-19, stay safe. Stay sane and always remember that God is in control. I'll see you tomorrow.